Hi everyone, Sarah from the Body Mechanics here. I'm here to give you another class. This class is slightly more intermediate. Um, it's definitely more challenging than the beginner's Pilates class I gave you last week. So please don't attempt it if you're not absolutely comfortable with that first class that we sent out. Um, and as always, please go carefully with the exercises. If you don't feel comfortable doing a particular move, please just stop doing it, have a stretch, have a breather, and then try it again. Um, as always, I will be giving progressions, so making things slightly more difficult and also make, making things slightly easier. So feel free to add on or take away um, from those exercises that do have progressions. We will definitely be thinking about breathing a lot more with this one. We've got some slightly more challenging abdominal work. So please do make sure that you are breathing at all times. As I said with the beginner class, breathing is quite difficult in Pilates when you're getting into it. But as long as you breathe at some stage, that's, that's all that, that I want. Um, also with these slightly more challenging exercises, please take care of your spines, particularly your lower back and your neck with some of the abdominal work. If you're not feeling comfortable, um, probably not a good idea to do that particular exercise that we're on. Right, first things first, let's do our warm up. So up into standing, we're going to start off warming up our upper body a little bit and then our lower body. So starting off with our dumb waiter, um, elbows at sides, elbows bent up to 90 degrees, palms up to ceiling. Take a nice deep breath in to prepare. As you breathe out, set your center. So draw in those pelvic floor and those lower tummy muscles. Breathe in to hold. As you breathe out, take arms up to the side and then breathing in to come back in. And we'll just gently warm up those shoulders, get the upper back and the chest muscles working. Nice and slowly, nice and carefully. We'll do three more of those. And last one. Okay, now we'll do some side bends. I'll just take a step back so that you can see me a little bit more. We're going to breathe in to prepare, breathe out to set our centers, breathe in to hold. As we breathe out, we're bringing the right arm up and over and doing a little side bend, sliding our left arm down our leg. And then we're going to come all the way over with the other side, reaching that left arm up and over. And then the right. Feel that lovely stretch on your side body. Right again, we'll do one more each side. And last one to the left. Lovely. Now we'll do some rotational work. So breathing in to repair, breathing out to set your center, breathing in to hold. As you breathe out, bring both arms up. As you breathe in, you're going to rotate around. So one arm in front, one arm behind, and then breathing back up. And the other way, one arm in front, one arm behind, and breathing in to come back up. Breathing out to twist around, and breathing in to come back up. Breathing out to twist around, and breathing in to come back up. This is a really, really lovely one for if you've been sitting at the desk at home for too long. It's a great one because it stretches out your thoracic spine as well as your lumbar spine and also your chest muscles. We'll do one more each side after this. And last one. Right, there we go, bringing arms down. Okay, now we're going to do a few little squats. So mini squats is what I call them. Breathing in to prepare, breathing out to set center, breathing in to hold. As you breathe out, you're squatting down and lifting both arms up to 90 and then coming back and again. And with this squat, what I want you to do is I want you to stick your bottoms out as far as you can so that you really start getting the gluteal muscles working and the hamstring muscles. It also makes you work slightly harder through your abdominal muscles because it destabilizes you slightly. Right, let's do two more of those. And last one. There we go. 
And our last um, leg warm up is our moonwalk. I love this one. So what you're going to do is breathe in to prepare, breathe out to set center, breathe in to hold. As you breathe out, lift up the one heel and then the other one. So we're just doing a little moonwalk on the spot. This is a great one to get the ankles and the knees nicely warmed up, get the Achilles tendons going and also the calf muscles. It also starts challenging your balance, which is quite nice. We'll do one more on each side and then down. So our last warm-up exercise is our roll down. So I'll face the side so you can see me. As we had in our initial class, um, we really want to use the, the roll down to articulate the spine to get every lumbar segment and thoracic segment and, and cervical segment moving. So a nice deep breath in to prepare as you breathe out, set center, breathe in to hold as you breathe out, chin onto chest, one vertebra at a time, rolling down over the other, as far down as you can go. Make sure those knees are soft, and then you're going to roll back up. Stacking the spine, one segment on top of the other. Let's go again, chin onto chest, one vertebra, rolling off in front of the other. Have a nice stretch at the bottom, and then coming back up, restacking. We'll do one more, and on this third one, we'll stay at the bottom and we'll get down onto our backs. Have a little stretch and then down onto your back. Okay, so in our crook lying position, we want to think about being nice and straight. So we want to think about our spines being nice and straight, nice and open through our um, chest so that both shoulder blades are heavy against the floor. We want to think about our hips and our bottoms being nice and heavy against the floor and feeling equal through the right and the left. We want knees and um, and knee, uh, we want feet, knees, and hips in alignment so that you've got nice parallel legs. And we want to make sure that we can ground our feet into, into the mat and that we're quite comfortable in this position. Of course, you will have a little hollow in your lumbar spine, that little lordosis that we all have, probably big enough for a tiny little break or a raise, and that's, that's what we want. Okay, so the first one we're going to do in this position is a pelvic tilt, just to warm up our lumbar spines a little bit more before we go into our bridges. So nice deep breath in to prepare. As you breathe out, um, set your center, breathe in to hold, and as you breathe out, you're going to squash your little break, and then you're going to come back up. And you're going to squash again, and come back up. We'll do this a few times just to make sure we're feeling like we can really, really open up that lumbar spine area. If you've been sitting for a long time and you're doing this class during your lunch break or at the end of the day, you might want to pause the video here and just do a few more of these. If you feel um, stiff or if, you have issue, if you've had issues with your lumbar spine at all in the past, this is a lovely one to do. So just do a few extra before we move on. We'll do one more of those. There we go. So last class we did our normal shoulder bridge. This time we're making it slightly more advanced. So we're going to do a shoulder bridge with a leg lift. If you don't feel comfortable with the leg lift, just stick with the shoulder bridge. And what we will be doing is we'll be doing five leg lifts on each side, keeping our bridge up. If you feel that you want to come down, have a little rest, hug your knees into your chest, that's absolutely fine. Rather, don't fatigue yourself too much right at the beginning of the class. Okay, so breathing in to prepare, breathing out to set center, breathing in to hold, breathing out to bridge up, and breathing in to hold. Breathing out to lift your left leg up, breathing in to straighten, breathing out to bend, and breathing in to come down. Breathing out to lift up the other leg, breathing in, breathing out, and breathing in.
breathing in, breathing out, breathing in and down. And just carry on. That's two each side. This is number three. Carry on breathing. It doesn't really matter when you breathe for this one. It's all pretty difficult, so try not to hold your breath. Just make sure you're breathing at some stage. Let's do one more each side. And let's roll down one vertebra at a time and have a little hug in. So moving on to our, our next shoulder bridge progression, we're going to do a hip twist within a shoulder bridge. This is quite challenging in that it, it's asking the gluteal muscles to turn on and turn off. I'll demonstrate one, come down, and then we'll start then because it is an unusual one. So breathing in to prepare, breathing out to set center, breathing in to hold, breathing out to roll up. Don't worry too much about the breathing with this one. What you're going to do with your left hip is you're going to drop it down, but you're keeping your right hip up. You're then going to lift the left hip back up in line with the right. You're then going to drop the right hip down, keep the left hip up, and you're going to bring that right one back up. And I'll come down. So with this one, we're aiming to do five each side while holding our bridge up. Once again, if you feel like you want to come down between each one or if you want to come down after two or three, that's absolutely fine. The very important um, focus for this exercise is the control of your pelvis and the switching the glute off and then back on and then the other side off and back on. So if you're finding that that's challenging and you can't do that, rather just have a break and do, do less of them. That's absolutely fine. Right, so let's get started with that one. Breathing in to prepare, breathing out to set center, breathing in to hold, breathing out to roll up. Keep on breathing when I'm not going to cue your breathing with this one. So you're going to drop down on the left and lift back up, drop down on the right and lift back up. And dropping down and up and down and up. This is number three and down and up. And this is four and down and up and this is the last one five and down and up and we're going to roll down and hug those knees in you should be feeling your glutes and your upper hamstrings at this stage those are not easy exercises but they really do get the glutes and hamstrings working nicely right so we're going to come back to glutes and hamstrings in a little while we're going to do some abdominals now once again, as I warned in the beginning, please don't do this if your back feels uncomfortable. If you feel like you can't keep the control going of your lumbar um, area, please do these slightly slower or take a step back and, and make them a little bit easier. Last week we did a single and a double tabletop. This week we're just doing a double tabletop with legs moving and also with a little um, shoulder and head lift if you feel comfortable. Um, so I will just demonstrate the double tabletop position first and then we'll go into our exercises. Right, so the first one we're going to do is a double tabletop scissors. So we're going to breathe in to prepare, breathe out to set center, breathe in to hold, breathe out to lift the one leg and the other leg up into 90 degrees at the hip and 90 degrees at the knee. Just keep your feet relaxed, it doesn't matter where your feet are. What we are also going to do as a progression, if you feel up to it, is Pop your hands behind your neck and you can lift your, your head and your shoulders up off the floor. If this isn't comfortable or if you can't control the position, just keep it down. So what we're going to start off doing is we're going to tap one leg down and up and the other leg down and up. We're going to do five of these on each side. If you feel like you want to make this slightly more challenging, you can go a little bit faster and you can actually scissor the one up and the one down at the same time. If that is a little bit too challenging, if you can't control your lumbar spine and your pelvic area, you can just go back to your one at a time. That's absolutely fine. If you feel like you're getting a bit tired, put the head down and carry on. Right, let's do one more each side after that. Take the head down and then one leg down at a time. So that was our scissors. We're now moving on to our hip twist. Exactly the same positioning. Um, head can be up or down. 
This is slightly more challenging, so if you found the scissors was the maximum of your effort that you can put in at the moment, you'd rather keep your head down. Okay, so breathing in to prepare, breathing out to set center, breathing in to hold, breathing out to come up into your double tabletop. If you want to, lift the head and the shoulders up off, the, off your mat, and breathing out as we stretch the one leg out, breathing in as we come back, breathing out as we stretch the other leg, breathing in to come back. This is our one leg stretch. Once again, if you want to make it more challenging, as you bring the one out, you can take the other one in. I tend to keep legs quite high. You can take legs a little bit lower if you want to, but that obviously does require a lot more abdominal control and a lot more hip and pelvic control. Make sure it's a nice smooth movement. Make sure you haven't squashed your little break or let it roll away and make sure you're not getting any pain in your lumbar spine. Let's do one more on each side. Back up to double tabletop, head down and one leg down at a time. Right, that was our hip twist, or sorry, that was our one leg, uh, one leg stretch. Now we're moving on to our hip twist. So this one is, is um, a slightly different challenge in that we're using rotation now. So you won't feel that you work as hard through your abdominals, but you are working incredibly hard to hold your pelvis still and to hold that little break or raisin underneath your lumbar spine. This is also in double tabletop. Um, so we'll get up into the position first and then I'll show you. So breathing in to prepare, breathe out to set center, breathing in to hold, breathe out to come up into your double tabletop. And once again, breathing is not very important, but if you are thinking about breathing, what you're going to do is you're going to breathe out as you take the one leg out. So breathing out to take hip and foot out to the side and in, and then breathing out to take hip and foot out to the side and in. Out and in and out and in. Very important with this one to hold that pelvis as still as you can. We're trying not to roll onto the one side when we're opening the leg on that side. We're trying to keep equal pressure through left and right. If you want to make it more challenging, you can come up into um, a head and shoulder off the mat position just to make it slightly more difficult. Let's do after this one, one more on each side. There we go. Head down, one leg down at a time. Right. That is almost the end of our abdominals, but I'm going to give you a little rest and we're going to do a, hip, a double leg hip twist um, and then we'll come back to our last abdominal challenge of the class. So for, for um, hip twists with double legs, what we're going to do is we're going to zip the legs up, so feet, knees and hips together, so you're really squeezing your legs together and you're going to maintain that squeeze throughout the, um, the exercise. For this one, we're going to take arms out to shoulder height. You can have arms um, up or hands up or down, it's totally up to you. Um, the main thing is that we keep our feet zipped together. So breathing in to prepare, breathe out to set center, breathing in to hold, breathing out to take both legs over to the one side. And if you feel comfortable, you can rotate the head to the other side. You're going to breathe in as you come back up and then breathe in out as you roll over the other way. This is a mobilizing exercise. We are still using the abdominals a little bit, but you won't feel them very much at all after what we've just done. It's a lovely one to do to mobilize your lumbar and thoracic spine, particularly if you've been sitting a lot. Really, really lovely one to do. I like, I like it as a mobilization rather than a stretch, but if you find that a stretch is more helpful, you can go over to the one side and just hold it there. Right, we'll do one more on each side, making sure you're still keeping a nice flowing, controlled movement even though your abdominals are a little bit tired. Okay, back to the middle, arms down. 
Right, our last abdominal exercise, well, our last exercise in this position on the mat is hundreds. This is my favorite um, abdominal exercise. I think it's great. Um, we will do little arm beats and we count to 100. We stay up during this whole exercise, but please, if you're struggling to maintain your control or if you're struggling to breathe, come down, have a breather and then carry on. I will be counting throughout the whole exercise so you can have a rest whenever you want to and just rejoin me. Um, if you want to do it in your own time, just pause the video and you can take as long as you want to. Right, so breathing in to prepare, breathe out to set center, breathe in to hold, breathing out to come back up into double tabletop. We're now going to come up into this position. So you're lifting head and shoulders up. Try not to hunch your shoulders. We're still trying to maintain them nice and open through, um, through our chest. The hundreds that we're going to do is beating our hands up and down like that, and I'm going to count to 100. So essentially we're doing 100 beats. If you want to, you can bring your head down and continue to beat, or you can take one leg down or both legs down. That's absolutely fine. Okay, so in our 100th position, let's go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 3, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 4, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 6, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 7, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 8, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 9, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Head and neck down, arms down, leg down one at a time. Oh, that's a tough one. I'm almost out of breath there. So that's a really, really lovely one to do because obviously you're using your abdominals the whole way through as you engage to lift, um, to keep your head and neck lifted and your shoulders and your feet. But it's really nice because beating the hands destabilizes you and makes you work that little bit harder, which is fantastic. Okay, so we are now going to completely change our position and come into kneeling on all fours. So take your time changing positions. And just make sure that you are comfortable in this position. So we were in this position for our beginners class, but I'll just quickly run through where we need to be here. We want it to be an active position. So we're lifting up and out of our shoulders. We're not allowing our tummies to sink down. We're really trying to activate that abdominal area. We still will have a tiny little um, look curve in our lumbar spine, but it's just going to be small. And as I said to you last time, imagine you've got a tray of drinks, a tray of tea, whatever you want to imagine, balancing on your, your back and you don't want to spill that. Our first exercise is, is a diagonal superman, and it, this varies from the superman that we did last time, in that we're taking the arm out to 45 and the opposite leg out to 45. This destabilizes us a little bit more, and it also makes us work slightly harder. I prefer to have the, the palm facing in rather than down, but wherever you are most comfortable. If you're struggling being on your, um, your wrists, or your hands, you can come down onto your elbows. That's absolutely fine. If you need to come back and have a little um, break and get your wrists going, please do so at any stage. Okay, so breathing in to prepare, breathing out to set center, breathing in to hold. As we breathe out, we're gonna take opposite arm and leg out to the diagonal and squeeze that glute at the top and then coming back in. We're then gonna take the other arm and leg out at a diagonal and then coming back in. Thinking about that tray, trying not to spill any precious tea or champagne out of your cups or glasses. Really feeling like you're working those glutes as well as those shoulder blades, as well as the supporting arm and leg. They are working very hard too. Do one more on each side. Great. 
that's all done. Now, just for a little bit of fun, we're going to do an ipsilateral superman, which means same arm and same leg. We're not going to do it as a mobilization as we've just done. We're going to do it as a balance, and you will see why. So let me demonstrate. This is, this is tough, and like I say, it's just for a little bit of fun to challenge our balance. So what we're going to do is we're going to straighten arm and leg on the same side. You're going to attempt to hold it for about 10 seconds without falling over. So that's 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And come down. And let's try on the other side. This side is not so good for me. So fingers crossed. There we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And down. There we go. Let's come back into our child's pose. Have a little stretch. Get those wrists moving. And coming back onto all fours. Okay, so what we're going to do now is challenge our um, trunks a little bit more and also really start to challenge our arms and, and upper backs, shoulder blades, um, and also head and neck. So thinking about your really nice position, what you're now going to do is tuck your toes under. Make sure if you are wearing socks that you are on a very sticky mat. Um, if you're doing this on your floor or just on a rug at home, please take your socks off because you will slip and possibly go flying. So breathing in to prepare, breathing out to set center, breathing in to hold, breathing out, and you're going to lift both knees up about an inch or so off, the, off your mat, and we're going to hold for five, four, three, two, one, and come down and have a little rest. And we're going to do this again, lifting up, five, four, three, two, one, and coming down. And again, five, four, three, two, one, and coming down. And up, five, four, three, two, one, and coming down. And we do one more of these, and up, five, four, three, two, one, and coming down. Right, just come back off your, um, your hands, give them a little a little rotation, give them a little rest. Okay, so our last challenging exercise of the class. We're nearly there, guys. Bear with me for, for a couple more, but this is the last challenging one. We're going to tuck toes under again, and we're going to lift both knees up again, exactly as we've just done. Instead of doing a static hold for five, what, the, what we've just done, we're going to do a little bit of walking. So we're going to take one tiny step forward on the right, one tiny step forward on the left, one tiny step back on the right, one tiny step back on the left, and then we come down. And then we go up again, we repeat that five times. Okay, um, the hands stay still, the upper body stays as still as you can. Obviously you are going to sway a little bit side to side, but we're really focusing on spilling as little of that tea or champagne as we can. Okay, breathing in, set center. Sorry, breathing in to prepare, breathing out to set center, breathing in to hold, breathing out to lift up. Now, just as long as you breathe, I'm happy. So that's one. We're going to step forward, forward, back, back, two. Forward, forward, back, back, three. Forward, forward, back, back, four. Forward, forward, back, back, five. And come down into child's pose. Give those wrists a little break. Get them moving. Right. We're nearly there. You have survived the worst of it, or the best of it. Um, what we're now going to do is a thread the needle pose. Um, not challenging at all, but a wonderful one for getting our spines mobilizing. I absolutely love this exercise. I do it frequently um, after a workout by myself. Um, it makes, makes me feel great. So breathing in to prepare, breathing out to set center, breathing in to hold, breathing out to lift one arm up to the ceiling, and then all the way around, and then back up, and then all the way through. 
If you're thinking about your breathing, I prefer the yoga breathing, which is the exact opposite to the Pilates breathing with this exercise. As we take our hand through, we're breathing out. As we come up, we're breathing in. But the correct Pilates way is to breathe out and then to breathe in as we go through. Take your pick, like I say. As long as you're breathing, that's all that matters. Let's do one more. Lovely. And then onto all fours again, other side. One side will always feel tighter than the other. For me, it's my right hand. And shoulder blade feels tighter than the left. But as long as you're having a good stretch on each side, that's the main thing. Right, let's just come back up off our hands, give our wrists a little roll around. And we're going to lie back down for our cool down. So let's start off with our hamstrings. We've worked our glutes and our hamstrings incredibly hard today, so we'll stretch those out. So catching um, your thigh behind your knee, pulling that up as much as you can. The, the uh, non-moving leg can be straight or bent, wherever you feel most comfortable. And you're going to straighten that, that moving leg up as much as you can. As you can see, my hamstrings are incredibly tight, so I can't get anywhere close to straight and then I'm going to bend. So I prefer a dynamic hamstring stretch, just because I am so tight, it makes it feel much more comfortable for me. But if you'd like to hold yours up there and sustain it, that's absolutely fine. Right, we'll do one more. Let's swap sides. Last one, and down you come. Crossing your ankle over your knee. If, if it feels comfortable, draw both up towards you and catch hold of your knee behind your thigh. If it doesn't feel comfortable, you can just leave it down like that and push your knee out to the side. Our bodies are all very, very different. And as we age, we do lose rotation through our hips. So um, some of you who are that little bit older might really struggle with this, which is absolutely fine. Keep your foot down on the mat and you will get a very good stretch in that position as well. Try and let everything go. Those glutes will be tight after we've just done, after what we've just done. So just try and let them go and really feel that stretch. It is a lovely stretch. Right leg down nice and slowly, let's change sides. Once again, we'll always have a side that's stiffer. My left side is definitely stiffer than my right. So hamstring and glutes, I really notice a difference in terms of my range of movement um, and also how it feels. So once again, try and relax into the stretch, try and do some deep breathing. And just let everything go. Okay, lowering that leg. Right, our last stretch for our cool down is going to be our windscreen wipers. So if you're on a mat, take your outside borders of your feet right to the outside of the mat. If you're just at home on the floor, just open those feet out a little bit. 
and we are going to place arms just at shoulder height. We're going to take both knees down to one side, as far down as you can get, and then all the way over to the other side. And what this does is it opens up the front of the hip, the groin, and it also gives you a lovely glute and upper hamstring stretch through the outside of the hip. You'll also feel it into your abdominals a little bit, depending how much of an arch you get through your lumbar spine. Do one more on each side. Here we go back to the middle. Let's just do a little knee hike to finish off. Take a rock from side to side. And then down and up. Right, guys, that's the end of our class. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you're all feeling better for it. Um, I will do another class with. Um, a few more progressions. It will also be an intermediate class which will be released to you. So if you enjoyed this one and you found this one challenging, definitely um, have a look at the, the next one. We'll be releasing soon. Thanks very much. Keep well. Bye.